Hey crafty peeps, so let's get into some fall DIYs. For this project, I'm going to use this scrapbook kit. It's from Simple Stories and it is from 2012. <laughs> <laughs> if you've been watching my videos uh, recently, I'm really trying to use things in my stash and this is just too cute. Um, I say my stash, but really this was from my sister's stash along with that hanging pumpkin. So this project is free for me to make. So I just picked out one of the pattern papers and cut out the pumpkin shape. And now I'm just going to cut some of these little cards that have sayings on them and I'm kind of just looking at how they might look on here. You can see it's really easy to decorate these. I always just cut out a few of these little cards and then some other prints that I like that goes with it. I love mixing prints. So I decide on this little one here that says autumn and I cut out a little bit bigger of a piece to back it. This is going to help make it pop off that pattern piece. I liked this one here. You could do it both sideways like that or up and down. I like that kind of um, banner look. So I go ahead and go with that. Of course, I want to use another pattern. So I am going to add this stripe to it. Now, I know you won't be able to find this exact kit, but Simple Stories and Echo Park are two of my favorite companies. They make these kits each year. So I'll link some of those below in the caption there. Um, and you will find ones that are very, very similar. And you can just use the same principles if you want to recreate this. Now that uh, hanging pumpkin sign is from Joann's. Again, though, that was bought at a different season, but you could easily recreate this with a frame as well as uh, just one of the wood pumpkins. Now, the image there had a rounded corner, so I took my corner rounder and I also rounded the outside there. That is a Creative Memories rounder, and if you are a scrapbooker, you know that is the original scrapbooking company and could very well be uh, from when I started scrapbooking at 19 years old. <laughs> and this little punch is from Stampin' Up! It's no longer available, but they do have similar ones to this at the craft stores. But you could just use your regular scallop scissors from Dollar Tree to recreate this. I like to uh, have little different shapes and stuff. I just think it adds interest. Now that I have the pieces the way I like, I will go ahead and just adhere these all down. And then you can see I have those stickers off to the side and I like to think, what can I do to add a little bit more um, elements to this? I realize it is busy, but I just, I can't, I just cannot make it too simple because I love all the elements. I want to use them all. They're just <laughs> so great. Um, I decide that I do want to have this raised up some, so I'm going to use some foam tape here from Dollar Tree, and this will just add some dimension to um, this project. Now, I like the thicker foam tape from Dollar Tree. It does come in a three pack, so different thicknesses, but I already had used the thicker stuff up. So that went on my shopping list for next time I go to Dollar Tree. <laughs> so now I'm just going to grab a couple of these stickers. These ones right here are supposed to kind of mimic like tape. They have like torn edges, which is really cute. Um, and then I'm just going to add this to it. Okay, now with the frame that I have here, I'm going to go ahead and use Antique Wax by Waverly and cover that frame. Now you could make this frame easily with some ruler sticks, uh, paint sticks, but here is the finished project. I lost the footage of like me actually hanging it again, but I really think it turned out cute. I thought this cutting board would be a cute addition to my fall decor in my kitchen. And this was already painted with white chalk paint. It comes 
white and shiny from Dollar Tree. So it is already covered with white chalk paint. And then using my antique wax, I'm just going to rub it over it and it gives it that wood look. Um, I wanted it to have a little bit different of texture. So I do take some sandstone chalk paint from Waverly and I add that um, in as well. Again, my, my camera just keeps shutting off for n no reason. I have no idea why it does it, so I miss um, a little bit of clips um, here and there. But um, from that same scrapbook kit, there was a really cute um, card that fit on here perfect, and it's Harvest, what's it say? Harvest market and I just thought that would be cute for the kitchen. So I cut out a piece of um, of the pattern paper just the same size as the inside of that cutting board. I add this um, one that I was telling you about that I just thought was perfect for the kitchen. I just take this ribbon here, I cut, dovetail the tips, just pinch the middle add a little um, twine to hold it together. This is a super simple project as you see, but if you decorate your kitchen seasonally like I do, um, this is a perfect addition. And then I just thought, oh, that center just needs a little something. So I went over to that sticker page and grabbed a little acorn and added it to the center. And then this project is complete. And as you can see, it's just really easy to embellish something with some scrapbook paper and stickers. I mean, it really makes cute decor. Again, another really easy makeover, this sign from Dollar Tree. And just taking, again, two of the pieces from that scrapbook kit. Um, one obviously has a saying and one is a pattern and I cut them I cut the pattern piece to size and now I'm just going to add a couple embellishments from the stickers onto um, this little setup here and add it to the sign again easy peasy but this one is one of my favorites I just it's so simple but I just think it is super cute I love making over these Christmas signs that hang from this little hanger thing that I got at the Target dollar spot two years ago. And I just like covering them for every holiday, of course keeping one for Christmas, but this way I can use the thing I bought year round. And for $5, it was a really good deal because, I mean, it came with four of those signs and they're reversible. So anyhow, I love the pattern paper here from that pack. So I just cut a bunch of strips. Okay, that way I get to use a lot of the different patterns. And because the sign is bigger than 12 by 12, which is how the paper comes in this kit, I am able to, you know, with the strips, um, just make it go all the way to the top. And you can see it's hanging over the edge there because it's not quite 12 inches um, wide, but that's okay. I, I don't cut pre-cut them because I want to make sure they're nice and even. So when I get all these pieces down, I'll flip it over and just with my X-Acto knife cut the edges where it's hanging over. So I get um, the big pieces down that I like and then I with smaller strips kind of put them in between. So I really liked this long piece here. You can see I can either go sideways with Hello Fall or there was this long one and I just liked how it listed all the things for uh, fall.
I picked one of the brighter uh, pieces here to back that um, one that has all the words and then just to make sure it pops off all that printed paper I just take my little brown ink pad and just kind of brush it around the sides that way it'll make it pop off that paper better so I will glue that down and then I will glue the other um, wording piece on top of it. Now I do decide that I think I'd like the idea of it popping off um, of the page so I'm going to add that um, foam tape to it. And also so I like I said I like to decorate these for each holiday that way I can keep it up all year round and so at the end of this project I will show you the ones I made um, for the different um, seasons previously. And here's another um, piece that I liked as well. So again, I cut a pattern piece that's a little bit more solid, adding the ink and then adding the cute card on top of it. Um, I'm gonna foam tape it again. I love that dimension it adds. Again, I know it gets a little busy with all the patterns, but that's how I like it. You can easily use less patterns and keep it a little bit more simple if you like. And then that you can see that little house off to the side. So that was actually like a square piece from that kit. And I went ahead and just cut around the house because I thought it was so cute. So I'm just going to add this. I'm going to add a couple more stickers and embellishments. And then the sign is done. Um, I just re-poke uh, the holes there at the top and rehang it. Um, onto my little hanger. Now you can make a hanger easily again with like a paint stick or just a long piece of wood and some hooks and you could have something similar to this where you can put it up for each season. Um, I haven't made one that just matches my home decor which I think I should do that way. I really can keep it up year round. So I have this ugly breaker box that's right by my front door because it used to be a garage I guess so I can use this to hang over it Again, another easy makeover. I just covered that little, um, what would you call that? Kind of like a crate looking with the antique wax from Waverly. This fall piece is just one piece that I cut out from that kit. And then I painted this cute little acorn with my um, marker there, just the top of the acorn. And then I just kind of decorate this and make a cute little stand. This would be great for a tear tray. I'm telling you, with one scrapbook kit, you could decorate like your whole house. Your, not your whole house, but like a whole room. And everything would coordinate and it would be so super cute. And it wouldn't take you very long to make a bunch of cute little projects. I'm just making a little finger twine bow here um, that I'm going to add to the center there where I tied the um, twine around and then I will just glue that little acorn to the center and that's how easy this project is. You can keep it like this. I did want it to stand on its own because again it would look really cute in a tear tray. And so I just got one of the tumbling tower blocks. I had another little block there that I had popped off something. So just using some hot glue, I just glue two of these together and now it makes it stand on its own. Whenever you're gluing this, do make sure that you um, glue it at a little bit of an angle so that it's not forward heavy. And this is how it turned out. I just wanted to take a second and give a shout out to the Redding Detailing Lab. They cleaned my car and got it back to looking like new. I had taken my dogs to a cabin. They had been in mud and yeah, it was gross. Look at how clean my leather seats are compared to what it was. I have a husky dog and uh, yeah, the hair and the mud. But the car looks like it's new again. It is a 2016, so it's six years old. And look at how amazing it looks. So if you are in Northern California, hit them up. Or if you're someone who just loves watching things get clean, they have a YouTube channel. And I know a lot of people enjoy watching that. So I will link them down below and you can check them out. 
Now I'm jumping to some other pattern paper that I had in my stash and I had these pumpkins from a 99 cent store but you could use that long one from Dollar Tree for this project as well. And uh, I went ahead and sanded off the glitter, cleaned it up because I love that thing there. <laughs> And so um, now I'm going to use some stamps. These were literally in a free bin that I got somewhere. And I'm going to stamp down on this kind of creamy tan cardstock with my brown ink. And then I will cut those um, letters out to size. So it went a little fast there. Um, so I took those six, no, five pattern papers and I just traced the pumpkins out. And that is what you see there at the top. So once I get these stamped down, like I said, I go ahead and cut them out and then I cut out another um, pattern that will go behind the letter. And I thought I'd show you this cute machine. This is a Xyron machine and what it does when you feed it through is it puts sticky on the back. Um, I just saw someone recently use this and I was like, oh my gosh, I have one of those, but I keep it in my scrapbook supplies and honestly haven't used it in years. So the sticky was like uh, a little bit off because it was really old. So if you bought one of these, it would peel off way better. But I'll link one in the description. Obviously not necessary, but I was like, I have it. I might as well use it. And it actually made it much easier to have this stick all the way across. But of course, Mod Podge, um, double stick tape, any of those things will also work. So I had already adhered the top ones there and I'm just going to see how nice and easy. And then I go ahead and sand the edges so that it, everything looks um, nice and finished. And also when you sand a lot of scrapbook paper, it kind of has a white core to the paper and it just really finishes it off. If you have small spots, you can just use a nail file to get inside um, those. Okay, so I have these little uh, wood letters that I got off Amazon. I will link them below. I love them. I've used them. Gosh, I think I've had these for uh, almost two years now, and I still have plenty of letters left. But again, one way to color these is do it with ink instead of paint. And this kind of gives it that um, stained look as well. Um, and then I will, um, now I will assemble everything. So like I said, I just cut out um, a pattern paper to go uh, behind the letters so they'll pop better. And then I'm also going to use uh, foam tape to, again, pop them up off the pumpkin to give it some dimension. The raffia bows there um, that you see are ones I had pulled off Dollar Tree signs. And then I made twine finger bows for the other three. I just thought the alternating of the bows was really cute. And then once I get those all glued down, I am going to glue those little hello letters um, there on that first pumpkin. And I used my precision tip glue from Barely Art. I absolutely love this. I think it's an essential for your craft supplies. I do use it quite a bit and it's nice to just have a tiny bit of glue um, come out. Once these are all adhered, that's the project. I think it turned out really cute. Again, you can use any pattern papers that are in your stash. I hope you enjoyed these fall crafts with cute scrapbook paper. Make sure you like and subscribe because I have more fall videos to come. Until next time, happy crafting.